I analyzed verifiable data from 3,142 loot box openings to show you exactly what to expect. But uh, hang on a second. I think we need to fix this. This year, I recommend you don't buy any Holiday Ops boxes. This year, you should consider buying a handful of Holiday Ops boxes. You should consider buying as many Holiday boxes as you can. Holiday Ops boxes remain the best value all year round that you can possibly spend on World of Tanks. You should sell all of your belongings and steal from relatives to buy as many Holiday Ops boxes as you possibly can. Joking aside, in the interest of full disclosure, Wargaming did provide me 200 Holiday Ops boxes, and I supplemented that data with many other people, including CCs and non-CCs alike. Here's the table I use to convert everything you can get in one of these boxes into gold. So we have one currency to work with when we're comparing its value to US dollars. So let's get going. So to determine the amount of value in each box, I take everything that was in the boxes, convert it to a gold value, add it all together and divide it by the number of boxes. Here we see we get about 924 gold per box. You're probably looking at me saying, wait a second, the credits conversion doesn't make sense to me. I don't like how you did that. I have years of premium time. I don't need those. And I have more garage slots than I have tanks to fill them. So what is the actual value to someone like that? Well, I also added that into this graph as well. So in this one, we only use the actual raw gold that was in the boxes and the premium tank values of everything that was dropped. With that, we have roughly 710 gold per box value. So if we take the gold per box value and multiply it by the cost of those boxes, we can generate this little handy table here, which basically tells us what we've already known for the past few years, which is the more expensive bundles are obviously the best value for your dollar. So to add on to that, I also did a little bit of calculation as to what you can expect in each individual box. So here are some averages on what you can expect from each individual box. We do have a drop rate of low tier tanks. I consider low tier six and below of about a 10.6%. High tier tanks, which are tier eights, are about 2.6%. That's just using the data that I've come up with. Also here are the statistics that I have from my actual boxes. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going through this data. Uh, if you'd like to spend more time with this, you can pause the video. Down in the description is actually a written article for everything that I'm covering here. So if you wanna cover any of this in more detail, Click that link. One thing I definitely wanted to cover this year was the history of these values, right? So if I pull up from the day that I started doing this type of article until today, um, we can actually see that there's an observable trend downward of the actual value you're getting in the 75 box package. One thing I wanted to make sure is I added on the sample size. So you guys can recognize that the really limited sample size from the first year could contribute to wildly different approximate gold per dollar values. If I were to selectively hand pick three boxes of 75 from this year, I could probably get a value that's quite similar to the 2017, 18 boxes. So make sure you take those with a little bit of a grain of salt. What I want you to gather from this is that we do see a downtrend, a very small one between last year and this year. Um, but I want to be clear that even though we have this downtrend, if you consider the most uh, efficient way of buying gold in the premium store is using the the war chest, which is 25,000 gold for 100 US dollars, which works out to 250 gold per US dollar. Even if we ignore everything except gold and tanks, the approximate dollar value of this is still way better than the war chest. So even though these are downtrends, we still see that these are a great way of populating your account with gold and premium tanks. Interestingly, this year, we actually got a little bit of a, a clip into what or how Wargaming calculates these odds. So in the APAC region, the APAC region, uh, they were legally required to list their probabilities. So here I'm going to throw you a little clip of that. Um, I'm unable to actually access that web page now, 
I don't know if it's region locked or whatever. Basically, it's saying that there's an 8.4% chance to get a tier 8 tank in 3D style. Um, but what's really fascinating about this article is that little blurb there that says you're guaranteed one of the epic items for every 50 boxes. So that tells me that you would be at minimum required to spend $80 to make sure that you get even one of these premium tanks. I did comb through my data to see if any of this was accurate. I didn't find anything that would directly dispute this, but I did see observable data where people opened 50 boxes in order and did not get a single tier eight tank, but they did get a 3D style. So depending on how you interpret this article, that would still fall within their epic item chance and guaranteed drop. But in any case, this is really interesting to me. And I would really, really encourage Wargaming to post this stuff on all regions and not just where it's legally required to do so. So let's say you've read that and you're not totally convinced that those drop rates are accurate. We're going to go through my drop rates real quick for my a little over 3000 uh, data points here. So in every box, you're given a random ornament. I figured, you know what? Let's throw it together and show you what the random ornament chances are here. You have basically over half, over 50% of your random ornaments are going to be level ones. And then another 28% are going to be the level twos. That leaves a very small bit of pie left for three, four, and five. I saw very rare, very rare for a tier five ornament to actually drop. We only saw 77 of them in the 3000 boxes we collected. So that is a very rare drop, but keep in mind that every single box comes with a guaranteed level five item. So, you know, you get what you get. So here's these drop chances. It has been observed that when a loot crate draws a specific um, vehicle, what it's actually doing is it's drawing a tier of vehicle and then it will generate any vehicle that's missing from your garage from that tier. So if I'm missing, say, the GSOR 1008 and I draw a tier eight tank from that loot box, it will look at all of the tanks in my garage and say, you've got all of them except this one. So this is the one you're getting. Once you have all the vehicles from a specific tier, then that one will be randomly generated and you will get the gold compensation for that vehicle. So that's why I've put together this chart, which tells you the drop rate by tier. And then I just multiply that by the number of boxes that you're buying. I've also generated another chart that has the drop rate by vehicle. So I don't think this is the way the game works. I think what it does is it generates a tier and then it fulfills that tier with a vehicle you're missing, which would skew all of these drop rates based on the player adoption of these tanks when they are for sale, if they were for sale. So you'll generally see a higher, uh, a higher drop rate of vehicles that are new. So because this year's boxes could drop uh, last year's 3D styles and this year's 3D styles all at once. So what I did is I looked at each data set from a player that submitted data to me, and then I counted how many boxes it took for them to get to five 3D styles. This chart here basically says that, you know, it's gonna take an average of 23 boxes to get one 3D skin. It'll take an average of 61 boxes to get four 3D skins. And on average, you'll earn all five in 75 boxes. Keep in mind, that's an average. That means half of the people that pulled 75 boxes, it took more than that to get all five 3D styles. So keep that in mind when you're buying these boxes that you are not guaranteed to get every single style that is available. So just for a little bit of fun, I figured I'd throw together the graph for the luckiest boxes. I do expect all of these boxes to have the exact same drop rate. Um, the only difference that really should be between these boxes is which type of ornaments you're getting from the guaranteed five and the guaranteed random. Uh, what's interesting though, is you will see that uh, CC boxes are tied again, or at least they are, they were the lowest last year and they're tied this year for the lowest uh, general average gold value, which I thought was kind of fun. There is something missing from the boxes this year, which is great. So the past two years, they put in a unique commander that could only be found in the Holiday Ops crates. That was Simon Claus and Julia Winfield. These were double zero skill crew commanders, making them twice as fast. Uh, they'll train twice as fast as any zero skill commander, and they will train three times faster than any average crew member in the game. 
They were the best crew members in the game. They were hidden behind a paywall with a random drop chance. I found this to be absolutely reprehensible. I do not like that they put this behind a paywall and they also put it behind a random chance. So even people that were trying to buy these boxes, none of them were guaranteed to get this commander. And that was very scummy. And I said that last year and the year before. I'm really happy to see this year they pulled that commander out of there. Not only that, they made him available for missions. They have unique lines for Chuck Norris this year. I'm a really big fan of what they've done this year to the unique commander, and I hope they do that again in the future. That said, I still have criticisms for Holiday Ops boxes. Number one, there are two vehicles in Holiday Boxes this year that are hidden behind the paywall. They don't have a guaranteed drop chance, and it is the only way in the game to get these vehicles right now. In my opinion, I would really like to see these vehicles available separately from the boxes so people can know exactly what they're spending to get exactly what tank they want, even if it is a lower value than just buying the boxes straight up. If not that, at least tell people when those tanks will be available later on. Say, hey, we'll be selling this again in January so that when people come in here and they go, I didn't get my, my tank in 75 boxes, but I can wait three months. I'm okay with that. If they at least did that, then people wouldn't feel this fear of missing out. Guys, that is my take on this year's Holiday Ops Loot Box Value Guide. Hopefully you found this information interesting or useful. If you find it useful, please make sure to share it with your clan mates, with your friends, so that they can also go into this understanding what they're actually getting in these boxes. And guys, if you like this video, it takes days of data entry and a lot of hours to put this kind of information together. So make sure you give the video a like if you found it good. And if you guys want to support me as a content creator, you can head over to Twitch. You can follow me on there and uh, watch me live. Or if you have questions, you can also follow me there for those two guys it has been great and I will see you in the next video. I'm a really big fan of what they've done this year to the unique commander and I hope they do that again in the future. I would really love to see Ryan Reynolds and I really want his on brand cheeky voice lines in the game.